think his biggest mistake was putting it on social media as quick as he did. I think his biggest mistake also was saying, "Your body, my body's failing. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna. I might not do the Arnold UK." Yeah. And I think he made another mistake by getting on the following day and saying, um, "Don't believe the hype. You know, I don't don't believe the rumors. I'm doing UK." And to me, it's like, look, bro, there's no rumors. Like no. you said, you he this said is it. what you said. Yeah. It's like you made this announcement. Yeah. He was. As far as him leaving Milos, that, that's that's your business. Yeah. Whatever goes on between you two, that's for you. You guys want to make a separate post. Thank you this. Thank you that. By no means. Do your thing, bro. Yeah. But to say your body's failing, that's, like that, that's, not, that's not a good look on you that, or him, for that matter. Yeah. Because it's like, if that's the case, why, why is it failing all of a sudden, right? Yeah. Um, and I think he spoke out of emotion. And I think it backfired yeah. on him a little bit. All right, guys, we are live here with huge guest for me, IFPB Pro, Nick the Mutant Walker. Man, welcome to the show. I really do appreciate you coming on the show and especially doing a live stream. You know, there's no no editing here. It is what it is, uncensored. And, um, you know, it means a lot for you to take time out of your day. You're getting ready for the New York Pro. You got lots of obligations and, and things to do. So I know time is of the essence. And so, again, welcome to the show. Of course, man. Thank you for having me on, you know. Yeah. Appreciate it. And, you know, full context, um, you know, the people who have watched my show, again, I've only been doing my podcast for about a year now on YouTube, so it's fairly new. But it's, I mean, I've had some big guests on already. And now adding that to the portfolio is Nick Walker. And it's just, it's awesome. But I've been hard on Nick, right? And, um, <laughs> you know. I, I'm really I'm, I've been critical of uh, his physique because I know he can become the Mr. Olympia, right? And I'm a big fan of his physique. I think he's done a tremendous, you know, good deed to bodybuilding with what he does with regards to social media, with regards to how active he is, with his commitment, with his confidence. Um, you bring a lot to the table, and so you're out there. You're putting yourself out there to be criticized um, by people because you're the top dog in the in the industry right now. You're the best bodybuilder in the world. So, of course. you know, right? So I I have been hard on you, but we're gonna you know we got some questions here, and I want to go right into it. We do have it live stream. So guys, if you're watching, leave a question uh, in the chat uh, comments, and we can get them in for Nick as well later on in the show. But we do have people joining us in right now, so. Guys, thank you for joining us here on the live stream. All right. So we'll just jump right into it. So first question, after tearing your hamstring, you know, a few days before the Olympia, you know, where was your head at? You know, your mindset, Did were you depressed after you had to like, literally drop out of the Olympia, you know, sit in the front row or so at the Olympia and watch the show, you know, from a wheelchair, you know, where was your head at at that point? Um, it was, I don't want to, I don't want to use the word depressed, um, but I definitely wasn't in the right state of mind, you know, especially when I knew it was torn, Yeah, like in the moment, I, I kind of just laughed because it's like, what, what am I going to do? You know, that's, I already knew before I left to go to Orlando, I probably wasn't going to make it on stage yet. Um, but we went. And we tried, you know, to get as much work done on it as possible to try and, you know, bring down the swelling and the bruising. But I just think with the timing of how it went, it just it was just in that progression period. It's just going to get worse before it gets better, you know. Um, So once, you know, me and Matt made a decision to just like, all right, man, like it is what it is at this point. Um, It was emotional. I was upset. I probably cried multiple times. Yeah. Um, I think I had like my true meltdown, we'll say. Actually, when it was right before we went to go watch the uh, the finals, because I, okay. I think at that moment, I, it kind of like really just sunk in. Like, I'm going to go watch a show that I had full confidence that I was possibly going to win this year in a wheelchair. Um, <clears throat> you know, so that was very emotional. Uh, but it wasn't even... <clears throat> Realistically, as bad as the hamstring was, I don't know even know if you knew, but I also tore the calf. 
No, on my no. on my other leg. So I I really couldn't walk. Like, yeah, period. that's yeah. technically why I was more in the wheelchair than the actual hamstring because I had a grade one tear in the calf, so I really couldn't even walk. Um, and that prevented me because the one that I tore my uh, calf on is like the the leg I kicked back to like flex my hamstring, yes. and my glutes and stuff. I wasn't able to do it. Okay. So I, I, if I didn't have that calf problem with the way I looked, I, I still would have went off stage. You would have did. I, okay. I, I, I know with the way the hamstring looked, I know I, I, they weren't going to pick me to win at that point. Like yeah. you, you just, you, you can't, right. I yeah. don't know. You know what I mean? Can't flex it. But yeah. I had, I had full confidence that I probably would have remained third place. Okay. 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 I do. And okay, so you 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 watch the show and then you go back home and like how did you get through the not maybe it's not depression, just being down from not competing and you know, seeing uh Derek Lunsford win, knowing that you could that could have been you, you know, how did did it people anyone help you through it? Did any other bodybuilders reach out to you? Any mentors like how did you get through that process after to heal from that process? Oh, I had a, a lot of people reach out to me, which was which was awesome. It was really nice, it was re much appreciated. Um, but I, I took a lot of, you know, BPC 157 at the time. Um, I went to go see my massage girl that lives in Vegas, Karen. I would see her like two to three times a week. Um, yeah. and then once I got home from Vegas though, it was like the progression, it, it kind of went faster than I expected. Yeah. Um, because there was a time when like, I couldn't even ride the bike because the yeah. swelling was so I couldn't bend the leg at all. Yeah. Um, so actually, when I got home, you know, from back to Vegas, you know, that next morning, me being who I am, I, I went to go try to ride the bike, <laughs> and it worked. Like I was cool. able to 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 pet. I didn't put any like resistance on it by any means, but yeah. I was able to do cardio. So for me, that was a very quick step in the right direction from what I was able to do like two days ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, cool. And I I still trained. I trained through it. I didn't care. Um, yeah. I didn't train legs by any means, but yeah. I still trained upper body. Um, and pretty much when the swelling kind of went away, the bruising went away is when I started to, uh, I just trained quads. I didn't really train hamstrings yet. Yeah. Um, but I would say after probably four to six weeks, I, I started to train hamstrings and then I started to train harder and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. And that's why everyone thought, you know, I was going to do the Arnold. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I was still very much in good shape. But I was never, I'm never one to really, you know, get fat after no. a show. I, I never really did. No. Um, I always, I like to just, I don't eat shit food. That much. I'm just okay. not big on it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I go out, we would like, we would go out to eat on the occasion, like once a week or something, but it, it was never, I never ate dirty. I would get like a yeah. steak and potato, you know? Okay. So, yeah. So I never, but I just, I like to pack on weight slowly. That was, that yeah. was my thing. So how is the hamstring now? And you're full confident that it's fully 100% or is it like, mm, it's, I'm still a little bit, I don't go 100% in my training on my hamstrings. I'm still kind of cautious of it or like, where is it at? I think I'm, I want to say it's pretty much 100. Okay. Um, but mindset wise, I'm still extremely cautious, obviously. Okay. So the way I train the hamstring now, I, I go higher rep than what I used to. Okay. Um, but the intensity is... I'd say about what it was before I yeah. injured it, but I am just, I'm just not using the same work workload that I would, but the intensity is relatively the same, but I think it's probably benefiting me at this point. Cause I don't need hamstring size in my opinion. Um, and, yeah. and I think with the way I'm doing it now, I, I honestly think they just got bigger. Not to be okay. honest. So do you, do you notice anything in the hamstring? Is there like some, you know, when I tear a hamstring, you can see like a missing divot into a hamstring. There's nothing like that. Okay. No, because believe it or not, I actually in 2019 I, I tore the other hamstring. Okay. Literally, okay. literally the same thing. So and like, you wouldn't even know. Can't tell. Yeah. yeah. Can't tell. Okay. Okay. So let's just say you did the 2023 Mister Olympia. What like did you think you were going to win that show? If you would have done the show, See, seeing what I saw, full confidence, I would have won. Yeah. Hundred percent. Because Hottie wasn't a hundred percent. Um, Derek. From the back, looked 100, but from the front, it's just something. He doesn't have the hardness that you have from the front. No. I was is... hard from the front and back all over. Yeah. So. Well, we saw you posted those photos. Thankfully, you still posted some photos. 
um, showing what you were potentially going to look like on stage. And it was good. You look good. Like everything was there, the hardness, the dryness, the vascularity, the, the fullness was there. So it sucks that you weren't able to, to get on that stage, but we're, we're coming back. Okay. Uh, I want to ask this question, you know, right now for the 2024 Mr. Olympia, who do you see as a threat? Is it Samson? Is it Hottie? Is it Derek? Who do you have your eye on? The, the number one person I see as a threat is Hottie. Okay. Not Derek. Because Derek will always be a threat because he just yeah. won the Olympia. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, after I really saw Hottie at the Arnold, Ohio, I was there for that. Okay. That's a very – if he looked like that at the Olympia, he would have won. He would have won. And you, he would have won. It would beat you. So you're like saying, yeah, Hottie would have beat me at the 2023 Olympia. Or I, with, the, with that look, it yeah. was pretty – Okay. Pretty pretty good. Okay. Um we're, let's talk about the Arnold Classic Ohio that just happened. Um with Samson Dauda and Hadi Shupan. Your opinion, Hadi, clear winner in that? 100 percent 100 percent Um He was he dude. Hadi, in my opinion, like he he's he has a wide waist, in my opinion. He, 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 he yes. has a little bit of a block, right? Yes. But he hid that so well. With he did the it. way his legs were, the way he, he was able to suck everything in. Yeah. It was it to me, that was Hadi's best look I've ever seen. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, conditioning wise, fullness wise. The legs look bigger for some reason. I don't know what his legs look, look like uh, they're huge. They were huge. Yeah. Like ridiculous. Um, conditioning from the back was better. He still doesn't have like the peeled Derek Lunsford style glutes, but they were sharper for Hardy versus the Olympia. They were good enough. They were good enough. Yeah. yeah. They were good yeah. enough. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed there. All right. Let's let's transition into the New York Pro, your prep. So what is your strategy going into this New York Pro? Are you, you trying to come in bigger, fuller, more conditioned? What's the, the plan with Matt Jensen and strategy wise well so it's funny so after um you know all the olympia stuff and whatnot i kind of just started training like you know during yates I, I went back to four days a week okay training still as strict as i possibly can but just balls to the wall to failure um and i think i have grown a lot okay. Okay. um because the way I train and what I learned from my own body is I need I need more rest. I do. I okay. need to take more to take more rest days with the way I train. Um and how much muscle I do carry, the body will get taxed a little quicker than normal. Okay. Um because I'm sitting I'm sitting at two two eighty two right now. Okay, I was gonna ask that. And what are we seven weeks out from the New York? Yeah. Um and what did you compete? So your last show was the was the not the Arnold. Well, let, let's just use the Olympia as a reference. Okay. I didn't do it. Because you didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. I got, but I was close enough, right? Yes. The lightest, the, I weighed two, 255-ish. 255 days before the Olympia, 2023. Yep. And now you're two, you say 282? 282. 282, seven weeks out. So potentially, so what is your, I don't know the scale doesn't matter in a sense, but look, what are you and Matt Jensen's kind of? Thinking if, that if I had to put a weight on it, yeah, I would say no lower than two sixty eight. Two sixty eight, and you were two fifty two two fifty two. You said for the leading two fifty five. So maybe ten pounds of solid muscle on your frame. And again, how tall are you again? Because a lot of people don't realize your your height. Five seven and a half. Five seven and a half. Okay, so five seven and a half. <laughs> I'm five six. That's like I can't imagine being in that much muscle. At, like it's crazy because you're not five ten or like that's huge. So pound for pound, you're that much bigger than the rest of the guys on that stage, especially the taller ones, right? Yeah. And Hadi, Hadi's what two? What do you what do you think Hadi weighs on stage? Two, two. I, I'd say 40? mid two thirties. Okay, because John De La Rosa said he was around two thirty eight on stage, and I know Hadi's bigger than John De La. De La Rosa. So I would think Hottie's in the 240s. He has he to be. Been. Yeah. He yeah. Been, for sure. Yeah. So you're unmuscling Hottie or by you know 20 pounds 
as well. And so. I think here's the thing. I think Hadi has probably the best condition in terms of that graininess look. Yeah. And I think I'm the closest one that rivals that. Yeah, I would agree. You have the hardness that a Samson can't bring that Derek isn't bringing from the front. So you and Hadi are on that kind of same level, but you just have more muscle than Hadi. No. I think okay. so. Um, what areas are you working on to improve going into New York and for the Olympia? Uh, if I, I specifically always the outer sweep. Obviously, that's always yeah. been the biggest, I think, criticism of mine right now. Yeah. Uh, but I think my legs, again, have grown a lot. Um, yeah. And I like, I think back overall, I mean, you can never have too much back. Yeah. And I think specifically just just the upper chest, just the upper shelf, just keep improving on it. I have a I have a good amount of lower yeah, titty and some upper titty. Yeah, you know, good chest development. Um quads you want to bring up a little bit. Um back is good. Just maybe some more thickness. I could probably use a little more thickness, I think. Yeah. But not a lot needed there. Delts are huge, not a problem. Arms are fine. So uh, so yeah, I see where you want to make the improvements. Um, currently, just you know, people will ask you this a lot. What's your current like diet consist of right now? Like at this point into the prep, uh, carbs, like how many grams of carbs are you eating per day, protein and fats? Protein. So we do about 200 grams a meal. Okay. Um, so it's like around seven ounces. Okay. Um, I'd say on an average training day, mm, probably around three. 350 grams of carbs. Okay. On, on a high day, we'll push it to, I'd say, around 700 ish. Okay. And then, like an off day, maybe, I think it's like 300 maybe. And when you're, say, you know, two weeks out, a week out from the Olympia or the, from a show, uh, how low, like, what's a low carb day for you? No, I, believe it or not, the way my body is, we, yeah. we, we eat into it. Like for the Olympia, I was eating at, at some point, like, you know, 300 grams of rice a meal almost. Like, oh, okay. so you don't, do you deplete though, like carb deplete at all, or is it just? I was. That was the thing. Like, my body was just going through it all. Yeah. Okay. So that, that, okay. And like, what about water manipulation? Do you do a water load or do you just slowly decrease your water? It, no, you know, we just it, decrease, man. We keep it very simple. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously we didn't get to that process, but let's just say the show's Friday to Tuesday, went Tuesday ish. We'll, we'll start to lower it. Little yeah. by little, you know, yeah. taper it down like that. Sodium, as far as sodium, sodium never changes. We're not one to, you know, take sodium out, reintroduce it. Like, that's just too much variable in my, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. All we do with that okay. is we just keep it consistent, and then we just put more in if if he thinks needed. But it okay. never – I have, we, as far as I'm concerned with Matt, I've never gone through a prep where we lowered it at all. Like, it was, it is what it is, or yeah. we up it, or we just go back to what you did originally. Okay. 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 And how much cardio are you doing per day? For right now? Part? Yeah. 25 so minutes. How much? 25 minutes. 35 minutes. 25. 25 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what's the most amount of cardio you do for a prep then per day? Like it, it, it varies because yeah. like last year um, we did like, what was it? 45 minutes fasted. And then we got to a point where we did like 20 or 25 minutes post-workout. But we only did that for like two or three weeks because my body just really started to take off. So we pulled yeah. that out. And then it got to a point where we were just doing a half hour in the morning. Wow. Okay. Because that's that's the – the I look at a guy like Samson Dowda, right? And and what is your thought on like why he can't get striated glutes like a Derek or like you or a hottie? Like what – like I, what? Is it the cardio? Is he not listening to his coach? Is he? Is it a skin thing? Like what? I, I never, I never like to assume anything, but yeah. I, I'm just, I'll say, I think it's skin texture. I think his skin is just too thick, man. Yeah. You know, and I don't know what kind of protocol he has per se, but when you have thick skin, there's probably yeah. certain things you shouldn't do. Okay. Okay. Because you want the skin to be as thin as possible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's. And when you are already prone to thick skin, why would you take things that are not really going to help that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Akeem William had that same issue, but then he somehow figured out the formula and he finally got his glutes. Right. He, let me tell you something. I, I look again. I wasn't there Friday, but when I saw Akeem on Saturday night, yeah. I said, oh shit. 
my man did his homework. Yeah. Because Akeem is on. Yeah. I was I was very impressed with Akeem. I actually just saw him uh, Saturday at the Jim Grant opening. I was yep. at and I, I talked for a little bit. Yep. He's what's funny is you know he's not young. You know he's 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 up there, but he's improving. He is. Right now. Like he's improving. And I and I like to, you know, I don't know what him and Chris Aceto are cooking up, but whatever, it's working. It's working. I, I hope whatever his plan is next, you know, he 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 wins. I really yeah. Do. Yeah, he's working with Chris Aceto and that that formula is working. He's coming in drier today. It's not he doesn't look good at the, the pre judging, but then the finals is just Yeah, it's like whatever whatever they do Friday, it's like whatever yeah. you got going on Saturday, just make it happen for Friday, you know. Yeah. Exactly. So you can place a higher earlier in the pre judging and not have to make that gap up at the finals, is which is what he's doing. Um, all right. So Tony O'Burton. Uh, I know you and him are kind of going back and forth on Instagram, kind of trolling each other, which is fun. It's all in good fun. Yeah, yeah no. I know that. Yeah. Um, do you see Tony as a threat at the New no. York Pro? Not even no hesitation there. No. I, I see no one as a threat. Okay. Um with with the whole doing the vacuum thing now like hottie's doing it like hardcore at the the arnold he's really showing that off samson was able to finally do it at the at the uk with the vacuum ab and die bowls. finally <laughs> yeah yeah he finally will do it um because he's having a little bit of stomach control issues yeah you know as well so to, to see him kind of pull it off was, was good to see Derek does it um are, is that something you're going to try and do or do you even care to try and do it because if you're in that top three top four lineup and first call it at the Olympia and then they're all fucking hitting vacuums and you're the only one that can the judges are like okay well is that a new standard that's trying to now be set with them doing it so much like why is Hottie doing the vacuum all of a sudden so I think it looks good on others but not good yeah. on everybody yeah I, I I don't think it would look that good on me I, no. personally that being said again I, I think with how dominant I know I can be, yeah. I personally don't think it would even matter. It would matter, okay. So you're not going to try and attempt to pull that one off? Just if I, I can... Listen, I, I do all that morning stuff. You know, I do the yeah. vacuums in the morning because I, yeah. I do think it serves a benefit in terms of having stomach control on stage. Yes. I, I find the great benefit in that. Yeah. But if I can't, you know, hit a vacuum on stage, I'm not, I don't think it's a make or break for me at all. No, it's not mandatory. It's not they don't judge it, but it is from a look perspective. Yeah. I, I yeah, I can see you know why some of them are doing it. Um okay, so next Zilla was supposed to do the New York Pro. Um he pulled out or whatever, couldn't do it. What is your take on Nick Zilla? Like if he were to compete against you, do you even see him as a threat? Because he's no, got the I size that you got. I think he's too I like him. He's a freak, yeah. he's a mass monster, and I like that shit. Yeah. But he's too big. He has no lines. His conditioning yeah. is off, yeah. and he's very unproportioned. So that would not that would not win. Yeah, I mean, I I agree with your some of your assessment there, but I do think he's got an okay physique. He's got his legs are too big for his upper body. He needs bigger delts. Um, his waist is a little blocky, right? I think he needs a better back, better improved back. Yes, better delts. Uh, like I said, uh, conditioning needs to be better, but. I would. I still would love to see him go toe to toe with you because I. Oh, I me think, too. That'd be a fun battle. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a good battle for sure uh, to see you guys because you guys are both both math math uh, math monsters in that sense. And um, I'm a I'm a fan of his physique because he has that almost like the, I don't know if you remember who Victor Richards was, but I do. Uh, yeah, oh, I do. he reminds me of that type of uh, muscle structure and density to it. So. Be interesting to see. I don't. Do you know what show he's doing? Is he doing the Detroit or? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. Okay. I have no idea. All right. Um, okay. So let's turn back or focus to the Olympia um, and your strategy for for that show. Um, what is your like when you work when you're working with Matt Jensen? Are you thinking okay, we got to come in more conditioned this year? The ju like what are the judges? I guess you didn't compete in 2023, so you don't really have any feedback from your last Olympia. So, well, what the feedback you? I got from the Arnold, which okay. is whatever, yeah, um, is you 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 were flat, you lost a little okay. leg size, which you know we, we I have my own opinion there, yeah. But so I told Matt we need to find the combination of the Olympia fullness where yeah. I took third with the Arnold um, condition. 
And we, 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 we literally hit that on the mark. Like it was, it was there. It was there. And I think that's what really gets me is because I like to think I'm known for when I say I'm going to do something and, and mm -hmm. it always happens. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, I told him, I said, this is what needs to happen. This is what's going to win. He agreed. Yeah. And like, we, we were pulling it off. Yeah. Like it was, I, I had, I had that Arnold conditioning, if not even better at that point. Yeah. And we were just slowly filling out. And it yeah. was it was it was gonna be it was gonna be remarkable in my opinion. Yeah. With that uh 2022 Arnold um against Samson, in your opinion, you thought did you still even though you were flatter, do you think you should have won that show? Yeah, I, yeah. I will take that yeah. to the grave. Okay. I I don't really under I mean, here's the thing. I understand, yeah, you weren't as full. Sure, mm -hmm. we can go for that. I get it. Yeah. But in my opinion, I wasn't flat enough to lose. And you had better conditioning. So it's, and that's kind of the same formula that kind of Hottie used. He was, you know, he they had the, right, the, hard, <laughs> the hardness and the conditioning. So they gave it to Hottie this time, but they didn't give it to you. Um, so it's just like, yeah, it's interesting with that. Yeah, one. but you know, it's, it's cool. You know, I don't, I don't dwell on it. They, no. they, they gave it no. to who they yeah. think is the better person. Yeah. And all I can do is take the criticism that they give. Yeah. And that's what I work with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I wanted to go into um, how many Mr. Olympia titles do you think you can win? Or do okay. you, you set your mind to? Like, first, you got to win one first, but then after that. <laughs> How many you want? To I, go I always said I wanted to win ten, uh, but I'm getting older here. Um, so if I had to pick, like realistically, like a solid number that I think I could do, yeah. let's just say I win this one, starting yeah. with you know 2024. Yeah. Um, I like to win five Olympias and four Arnolds. Yeah. Okay, so I was going to add another question. I'm going to come to. Um, so, do you think people confuse your confidence with arrogance when you you? say yeah, things like that they don't they never seen someone like that before i and i think they don't do it that much they don't confuse it now at this point because everything i said i was going to do i did it mm -hmm. there isn't one thing i said i wasn't going to do that i didn't do yeah. except win the olympia yet but the thing with yeah. that is i may have not won the olympia yet but name a show where i haven't improved on that's true that's true i mean you, you how old are you again people can well, need to 29. So you you have plenty of time to accomplish that goal with the Olympia, right? That's yeah, easy, right, to do. So people got to remember you're only 29, which is crazy. Um, and the fact that you've done is what you've done so far in the sport tw in your 20s, basically, your late 20s is ridiculous. So, you know, that has to have some respect there as well for what you've done. Um, with the talking about the Arnold, the half a million dollar prize money now for 2025 are you doing the arnold next year of course it's half a million dollar paycheck yeah absolutely if you were to compare the arnold to the olympia and how it's run and you know the backstage process with having to sit backstage and wait to go on stage you know the arnold in my opinion is run much faster and you know with the olympia like, i think the arnold is that? run much faster just because there, there's less categories that's true. Yeah. I think if the Arnold had exactly what the Olympia had, it would it would very much be the same thing, you know. Okay, they're forced to kind of uh deal with that because of the, the amount of classes they have. Because uh, Olympia is, is the pinnacle, right? So it has every class you can think of. Yes. You know what I mean? So it yeah. takes obviously is it really long sitting backstage? It doesn't suck that you know bodybuilding has does it Do you go think it affects you? Almost eleven at night. I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> is, exactly. You know? But do I think it affects me and the way I look? Yeah, like you're the way you're looking. It, you're it sitting there. You're a bigger guy yet. too, right? It hasn't yet. Okay. If anything, because I, this is the, I love this shit. This is the show I look forward to. So when we get backstage, we're sitting. I'm yeah. literally sitting in a corner, my headphones on, just patiently yeah. waiting. You know. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you definitely doing the the Arnold. Uh, would you have done the Arnold regardless if they had that prize money at half a million? We're still going to do it. Okay. You want to win back that title? I sure do. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, okay. So you have to qualify for the Olympian this year. So you're doing the New York Pro. Yeah. Let's let's say 
something crazy happens and Tony will beat you. Never happened. I know this. But what would you have to do another show? <laughs> what show would you do if you had to do another show to fucking qualify the, for the Olympia? I don't know. What's after New York? Uh, that's uh, so May, so June. There's the Toronto. There's the Vancouver Pro. There's probably uh, I think Orlando's closer to the Olympia. So yeah, there's there's Texas Pro. You know, I'll uh, say this: the Cali. I'm not even gonna pick a show. Put it in your no brain. No, no one, no one's gonna beat me. No one's gonna beat you. Okay. I mean, I, I I haven't done a prediction yet, and I'm still kind of waiting to see how Tony. Well, you know, you know what it is, bro. Come on. I I, I know it's gonna be kind of hard for Tony to beat you. Let's okay, let's, let's be start. real. Let's be real. Yeah. I, it's it, for for sure, for sure. I want to see how Tony looks at Brazil, and I'm not sure doing two shows close together. Do you think he'll be Rafael? Tony looks good. He looks improved, but Raphael being, you know, you know, more muscle mass on his frame. Um, if he comes in more condition than he did at the Arnold. Um, That's what I said. So I was, I was there, right? Yeah. So when I saw Raphael, I thought that was his best overall look to date. Yes. Do I think it was his best condition look? No. no. But I think as the overall package, I yeah. think it was his best. Now, if he comes in tighter for the Arnold Brazil, yeah, I think he'll win. Do you think um, Rafael can push Samson Dauda? Like, do you think Rafael is going to be in that top six mix at the Olympia, or do you think? I think he won. He 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 kept up his Yeah, he kept up yeah. his Okay, I agree with that. Yeah, another ten pounds. Another ten pounds on Raphael, and I think he can he can be right in there uh, with Samson because he does compare very well with Samson. Uh, um, like his legs, his, Raphael's legs are huge. They they don't look like they are. They I don't, think, but like yeah, they they got some big. They got some size on them. Okay, okay. You yeah. know, and I think from the from the back, I think Samson definitely beat him in the hamstring yeah. department area yeah. as far as size goes. Yeah, but as far as when they hit like a back double, a back lat spread, like I thought it was, you know, was close. Yeah, yeah. Um, talking about Samson, um, and you kind of been through this same situation where, you know, you had your coach and you you publicly announced, hey, you know, go in a different direction, right? When that happened, but you did it professionally. You did that. You made a post about it. You came out publicly. You kind of got in front of it and made that announcement. Um, and now you saw what happened with Samson Dalla and Milos. And how he kind of split with Milos through his stories, and then he kind of, you know, was saying, "My body is failing me, and I got to go to the hospital." And then he fight, you know, he splits with Milos, so it looks like maybe Milos it was partly due to Milos, and like it was this really bad look. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that whole kind of thing and how that went down? So, me being one that was, I guess, somewhat in that position at one point, yeah, you know, and I'm sure him losing that Arnold, whether he wants to you know, admit it or not, put him in a very emotional state. Yeah. You could clearly you could clearly see that by the things he posted. Um yeah. I get I get I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I was there. I, I've been in those places. So I, I get it. I think his biggest mistake was putting it on social media as quick as he did. I think his biggest mistake also was saying your body my body's failing. I'm not going to, I might not do the Arnold UK. Yeah. And I think he made another mistake by getting on the following day and saying, um, don't believe the hype. You know, I don't, don't believe the rumors I'm doing UK. And to me, it's like, look, bro, there's no rumors. Like no. you said, you, this said. is what you said. Yeah. It's like you made this announcement. Yeah. He was, as far as him leaving Milos, that, that's that's your business. Yeah. Whatever goes on between you two, that's for you. You guys want to make a separate post. Thank you this. Thank you that. By no means. Do your thing, bro. Yeah. But to say your body's failing, that's, like that, that's, not, that's not a good look on you that, or him, for that matter. Yeah. Because it's like, if that's the case, why, why is it failing all of a sudden, right? Yeah. Um, and I think he spoke out of emotion. And I think it backfired yeah. on him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, there is more to the story um, about Milos and uh, Samson that I've been made aware of. Uh, and hopefully that comes out. 
Um, sorry, they're doing renovations above. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, but from what I heard, it's not it's not good. So I, I do hope that comes out uh, about what uh, transpired between Meals and Samson. Really? Uh, there's yeah, it's the uh, it's uh, I can't say it. It's got to come out. I can't be the one to to let that information out. <laughs> don't, you know, don't, I, be, don't be the I can't. One. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. It's in confidential uh, information, so I'm just going to leave it there. But um, yeah, you know, and like what's like it, now his wife is helping him, you know, is coaching him for these shows. And he kind of gives kudos to his wife and, you know, the how he looked for Prague and Romania. And It seems like his wife helped him for the majority of all the shows. Yeah. But then why did you have Milos? Like, what? It's just kind of confusing on, like, how some shows Milos was doing and how some so his wife was doing. And then and then when he loves to look good, gives his, his wife it's credit. It's confusing. It is. To be honest. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, if I, I, I don't think I'd want, you know, my wife uh, coaching me for my show. Like, what could you imagine your wife coaching you for your show? Like, it just, I would, I wouldn't. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's just not. You need a, you need a, you need a, an experienced coach, which Milos was, um, helping you get to where you you need to be. And he did. He did. He got Samson to be, you know, one of the top bodybuilders in the world. And was able to quit his job. Was able to buy a McLaren or get a McLaren. I don't know what he's doing with that. Um, don't know if that's a small. I, I want to know how he fits in it comfortably. That's what. Yeah, I that's true. So um, you know, it's interesting to see what's going on with with Samson. But you know what? I wish him the best. I hope he comes back to the Olympia uh, this year and you know crushes it as well. It's going to be interesting. You know, it's going to be a lot to, for him to prove at this of at course. this Olympia. I'm I'm curious on who he's going to work with. To be honest, yeah. If if it's his wife or you know somebody else, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, Asita would. I mean, with what he's doing with Akeem, I think him and Akeem kind of have that thick skin, similar physique, right? So maybe it's Asita. Um, so let's jump into another question here with regards kind of like dealing with social media. You know, how do you deal? Because I like again, full context. I was hard. I've always been hard on Nick Walker and even people who see me post videos about you you're like why do you hate you must hate nick walker and i'm like no i don't i don't hate nick walker uh, i think he's got again a tremendous physique and he can be a mr olympia winner but um i did cr criticize you on your waist right and your structure with that and i'm not the only one that's done that but how do you deal with that when you do get comments like that and you get trolls out there sometimes coming at you mentally how do you deal with it because so you're on so you're big on social media you got 1.5 million followers on Instagram. you get a lot of attention wow i mean it does it doesn't really bother me why would it you know yeah. i've won an arnold i'm third in the world at the Olympics. like i'm there yeah. for a reason so if you want to talk about my ways it's why don't get on stage bro you know I'm yeah see what you got. <laughs> exactly exactly right and, um, you know, in the media, we're, we're allowed to have our opinion, right? We're allowed to say what we want to say, and it's freedom of speech and, and, all, and all that. So it's like, it's part of, it comes with the territory, right? Um, you're putting your, you're putting your physique out there for us to see. Well, that's, that's, that's also another thing, you know, I, I, had, I, I know of, and I think other bodybuilders just need to accept. Like, you're putting a lot of your info, a lot of your life, your, your, your body exactly. your, on social media for the whole world to see. Yeah. If you truly believe you're going to get nothing but compliments your entire fucking career, yeah. you're sadly mistaken, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I personally think I get more shit than positivity, to be honest. Yeah. But it, it, it just comes with the, you just got to accept it. It is what yeah. it is. And I like to kind of, I like to lean into it and feed into it. That's why I post yeah. as much as I do. Because the reality is, I, I don't, I really just don't care. Yeah, because at the end of the day, what matters is what I look like on stage. That's yeah. that's really what what matters. And I know when I'm on stage, there isn't much talking at that point. Well, yeah, and, and you're you're not quiet. Like you you do, you had some beef with the blessing back in the day, um, and the blessing talked a lot of shit, and they can never back it up. <laughs> you never still, still can't. Like, you still can't, right? Um, and you know, you know, you've been outspoken. You've, you've, you know, I remember you said, you know, Samson Dowd has a shit back. I remember you said that, and you got a little, <laughs> you, got, you got some kickback on that. And you know, you kind of just say it like it is, right? You're not one to hide it. No, but here's the thing: like, 
I I never I never mean what I say in like a, a harsh negative way. I just think like again, being from the East Coast, like this is just how we talk. The wording like, of it, like you don't. It's just you know you know it's that's like how you describe it. Guy, right? It's like when I talk yeah. to a guy, and I'm like, oh, you little skinny bastard, you know? Yeah. Like that's just that's just how we speak. So yeah. when people interpret the wrong way, like I get it, but stop being a sensitive little bitch. Like yeah, you know, like this is this is the world we live in, bro. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, again, I've, I've talked about this on another show uh, that you know, and then and then Samson came out and he said, "Hey, you know, I, you know, I'm sick of people humiliating me and 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 you know, talking shit about me and not winning the Arnold and this and that." And I'm like, "What do you? What, why are you saying that?" Like, I mean, and then I don't know if you heard, but his wife DM me and because um, I was criticizing his conditioning, I said, "You know, uh, you know, I made a video like I don't think he's going to win the Arnold with the conditioning that he's bringing." Um, yeah. Right. And so she messaged me and was like personally attacking me. And I was like, first off, like, why? Like, I'm just like any other channel. I'm just criticizing and critiquing his physique. I'm saying his conditioning needs to be better. And then she just really got pissed off at that and then ended up blocking me. And Samson ended up blocking me. And I was like, I, okay. The, <laughs> the thing with Samson is what I try to get everyone to understand. I, see, I've been in the industry and the scene since I was like 17, 18 years old. Yeah. Samson pretty much just walked into it. Yeah. And the, yeah. his entire career, he was either not really known, right? And then when he got known, yeah. it was nothing but positivity. Yeah. But now since he made this huge trajectory of straight positivity, now everyone's going to start nitpicking. Yeah. every little detail possible that's what happens when you become the one of the greatest that's what happens when you have a fast you know rise to the top real quick yeah you get you you know you, you ride this nice little wave and then yeah. there's gonna come a time where you're just gonna go and yeah. that's where he's at right now and he doesn't yeah. know how to handle it yeah but it, it's it's part of the game bro like yeah. this is part of the process I agree, and he he got a little defensive when he was doing some Q and As around the Arnold, and um, the fans kind of noticed that. And they're like, "Hey, man, I'm I'm losing respect for Samson. I don't think I mean I'm I'm not a real a fan of his now because of the I'm seeing his character come out here. So he's got to be careful. He's got to walk that fine line of you know showing the fans respect in that sense. And you know he can kick back and clap back a little bit like you've done too. But like it just seems it came all out at once after Arnold weekend. Yep, and um, I agree. You know it's uh. He's got to do some cleaning up there, I would say. A little bit. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I do agree. So, um, so okay. So, let's let's talk about, you know, what type of le legacy do you want to leave in this industry? Have you thought about, like, what I, what do I want to be known for in bodybuilding when I'm gone? I honestly, I just, I want to be known as a guy that was able to just instill confidence and everybody to believe in themselves, you know, because listen, I went through very, 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 very dark times, mm -hmm. you know, as a child. And, there, you know, it, it led me down, down a very dark path many of times. And there was choices I had to make and it was either a make or break, you know, and I chose to not give up on certain things and lifting was just like more of an, uh, an escape goat than anything for me. Like that's really yeah. what it was. You know, but I was a big kid, you know, so everyone suggested I, you know, start competing. Yeah. So as soon as I graduated high school, I started competing. Um, and obviously the rest, the rest is history. But we, the problem, the thing I want to instill is just like, look, we all go through some dark shit. We all yeah. go through dark times. They're going to go through moments in life where you might not think there's, there's light to be, yeah. to be seen, but some people take longer to find it than others, but it's there, right? And you just have to fight to get there. Um, and that's just one thing I, I think is important to instill in people. It's it's just to just not give up on anything, you know? And and that's part of kind of your demeanor is the confidence that you have, especially when you're talking about, hey, I'm, I'm going to win this fucking show. I, I'm, you know, don't count me out. Like you have that confidence. A lot of bodybuilders don't. Do that like oh, I hope I do well. I hope I get in the top five. Let's be real. I, I, this I, think, yeah. I think majority of the bodybuilders in, the, in this day and age are very insecure. That's why mm -hmm. we're bodybuilders, bro. Like yeah. there's an, there's a self image issue. It is what yeah. it is. Yeah. Like that's why we do it. Majority yeah. of them lack that confidence, and that's 
and, and I guess to me it's weird because I also grew up playing sports, right? So I was very competitive yeah. and I, I wanted to win everything, no matter yeah. what. And, you know, I'll say I was kind of that sore loser being on a team sport because I knew I was one of the best. And if I lost because somebody made a mistake, I, I was not, you know, a happy camper. And in bodybuilding, yeah, you got a coach, you got a team, you got this and that. But the reality is it, it, it's on you. Mm -hmm. You're you're the one that has to work. You're the one that has to do the cardio. You're the one that has to diet. So yeah, your coach could make a mistake, but you have to make sure you're perfecting everything on your end first. Yeah. You know? Agreed. Agreed with that. Um so next question here. What do you see yourself doing after you retire from bodybuilding? Like, do you have a plan? Do you want to open it? Like people open gyms, they do different things. Like, what's your kind of game plan your five-year strategy after you retire from bodybuilding at that point i mean i like to uh, i would love to have a gym um i would like to starting now it's just really invest a lot of my money into properties and things of that nature yeah um and have a business at some point okay okay um if you could just name one bodybuilder who would you think in your opinion is the greatest bodybuilder of all time jay color jay color okay why is for many that? reasons. I think, for one, I think me and him are very much alike in terms of mindset, for one. Yeah. Um, I think our bodies, to a degree, resemble in terms of, you know, the wide waist yeah. structure, the wide, you know what I mean? It's very similar in a sense. And also, he's, in my opinion, man, he, he achieved the business of bodybuilding. Yeah. Like, that not many were capable of doing. Like, he did it all. Yeah. You know, he he won the Olympias. He won the Arnolds. He was one one of the best in the world, and all doing that while doing the business of bodybuilding. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can follow in that kind of Jay's footsteps, that would be a good path to take. Where and even now, look at him. You know, he's 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 fifty years old. Yeah, he's still big. He's lifted. He's having fun, injury yeah. free. Like he's doing his thing, man. He's, he's enjoying life, man. That, that's I envy that. That's that's really awesome to see what he's doing. And um, still big, right? Still looks good for 50. Yeah, he's like two forties, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, so oh, that's awesome. Okay, so you have a game plan where you want to go after bodybuilding. Um, another question: Do you have any regrets with anything you've done in your bodybuilding career so far? No, I, I and I say no because I think even the, I guess you could say the minor mistakes that were made have led me to where i'm at today um yeah. and so so no i think e everything it serves a purpose everything happens for a reason you know you may not understand certain things in the moment but down the road you will and i think a lot of things have happened you know for this to happen for this to happen and i and i think everything um is going the way it should right now all right, so we got a lot of people here in the chat, and uh, I'm trying to look to the side and try and see your, some of your questions. There's so many. Uh, got Project Bodybuilding says, what poses does Tonio beat Nick in? Front lat spread, that's about Zero. it. Oh, Zero. <laughs> Zero. Zero. All right. Yeah, I mean, you can't, I mean, we're going to see what happens uh, on that on stage there, but. Um, Tonio, Tonio is literally the size of my left leg. <laughs> Yes, there's going to be a, a huge size difference between the two of you. Um, this is this is child's play. Child's play. All right. I know. I hope. Hopefully, Tony is watching this because uh, he's gonna he's gonna have fun, <laughs> fun with this. Uh, okay. Let's see a few other questions before we let Nick go here. Um, so Peter's saying you should try and do the vacuums. Okay. Um, all right, let's see. There's so many. Okay. Nick's not 36, he's 29. People asked him that, your age. Who said I was 36? Uh, Jack Todd. <laughs> Jack Todd said, I think he's 36. 36? Saul well, says, says 38. No. Now they're debating what your age is. Well, luckily, hey, I'm clear in the air. He's, he's 29, guys. I'm 29. Jesus. If I look 36, I got a problem. <laughs> yeah. The most bodybuilders look older than they actually are. It's just, That's true. Yeah. Uh, 
Questions for Nick, guys. I'm, I've lost track. I'm trying to go through here. I don't take much time. Why doesn't he hit the front double only crunching instead of doing two versions? Oh, so when you're doing the front double, you crunch your abs in? But you do both. You, you open it up do and both. he does both. So, okay. How many guest posing do you do you do per year? I really don't, to be no. honest. Like the because main one I, I do now, it seems is I, I do the Pittsburgh Pro. Yeah. So that guest posing, but do you not think it's because I remember Jay used to do them all the time, Ronnie back in the day, like they used to do a lot of guest posings. But do you think it's like more of a distraction and takes you out of your, your routine? No, and... I, I think they're fun and I, I enjoy doing them. I just don't think they're as popular as they were back in the day, like that. Okay. All right. Diet question. Do you use any digestive enzymes to get the food down? I'm currently struggling with 5,000 calories at 210 pounds. Oh. Nayesha. Um, I use uh, Betaine HCL by HD Muscle. Okay. That helps a lot. I take one cap uh, three times a day. Okay. Um, Samson11 says, how are you improving your front lat spread? I honestly hit it hit it really good one day, and that's luckily it stuck with me. So, well, you okay. you guys will see that in New York. Okay. Who do you think Nick matches better with, Hottie or Derek? Hottie. Hottie, yeah. All right, guys. There's just so many questions. I can't pass them all, but um, all right. Well, man, I had a, I had a good time talking with you, man. And I really do appreciate you coming on the show. And um, is there any, you know, shout outs you want to give sponsors, any events that your, your appearances that you got coming up? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll just shout out all my sponsors. You know, we got AC Muscle, um, Alphalete, um, Celsius, Mega Fit Meals, Uprising, um, and I actually will be guest posing at the the Pittsburgh Pro. Pittsburgh Pro. Um, what about your online? I see you do online coaching, right? You do like, yeah. Do you, like you're doing online coaching? I saw you have an app or something that you're doing. Yes, I do. I do online. I don't advertise it as much. I just try to yeah. keep it very minimum. Okay. Um, but I, I do do online coaching. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. I just want to see if there's a few more questions, guys, before we jump off. It's lots of you in here. Thanks for, for joining us. Thanks for Nick for giving us the time to do this. All right. Well, we'll probably wrap it up there, guys. I don't want to keep Nick too long. I know you got to probably eat. Right? You got Almost. Time is schedule to keep here. But uh, uh -huh. what does this guy say? Nick should be just on waste. All right. Oh, okay. Here's a question. Why did you leave Nevada and go back to Jersey? <laughs> um, let's, well, so since the New York Pro is in Jersey, um, I figured I haven't really spent a large amount of time with my family at all recently. So I figured I'll just go home and prep there yeah. and go home yeah. and go home after. And are you, do you plan on staying out there after or moving back? Too. I don't know yet. You know, like, time, time will tell. I just, I'm just focused on the show right now. Um, so you have a house out there too, or is it like two houses and one? No, I'm, I'm staying uh, at my parents' house right now. Oh, so you got you left your place that you had it. So you're completely like moved out there for now. You may, you may or may not come back to Nevada. Okay, I see that. Um, another question too, just about coaching because of the whole ordeal with with Samson Dauda and his coach with Matt Jensen. Do you? Well, I'm sure you're going to have to say it, but listen to every word, everything he says, or sometimes you're like, eh, you know, I kind of know my body, you know, what? Eh, I'll probably just do this. I'll skip that. What are your, what's your so, relationship? Okay, like I'll, I'll answer that truthfully, because yeah. I, this is what I like about me and Matt's relationship is we have, I think the best communication. Um, a lot of times, like, for example, I'll talk about, I'll, I'll mention cardio for a prime example. Yeah. Yes. Matt is very, well, with overall, I think he's big on just very, very, very intense cardio. Like that's that's his thing, very intense. It's and well, and I think last year during Olympia, 
I think because how, how hard I really do train, I think doing very, very intense cardio, uh, it backfires a little bit. So what I did was is Can you explain to people what backfire means when you're doing to you? there, Okay. I, I got a lot of inflammation. Okay. Okay. Like the way the weight started to go up and it, it didn't make sense, right? Okay. So basically what I did was I, I scaled back the intensity. I, I kept the same time, you know, however much I just didn't go as hard. Um, and then the weight started to come off, come off, come off, come off. And then like whenever I check in with him, I would tell him, I said, look, bro, I'll be out this week. I lowered the intensity completely and my body has drastically improved. I said, I think, you know, we should try and ride this out as long as we can and, you know, and, see, and see where it goes. And he'll be like, yeah, let's do it. You know, Matt with, you know, I don't know, he's looked like this for all of his clients. He's very big on communication. Like he, he, he likes feedback. He follows the feedback. But he has no problem letting, like, if he doesn't like something, he's not, you know, he's gonna be like, nah, I don't like that. But I listen everything to a T. But if something doesn't feel right, I let him know immediately, like, yo, we should, let's try this and just Yeah. see how it goes for a few days, whatever the case is. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so you, there is a little bit of work And, there. I, and, I, and I, that's another thing with like people and their coaches. Like, I don't know, like, are people afraid to communicate? Like, are people afraid? to ask questions, you know what I'm saying? Like it, that's, that's what they're there for. You know, I, I do know there are some coaches out there that it's, it's my way or the high, highway type Okay. situation, which in my opinion, that's, that's a bad way to coach because every, everybody's going to be different. Right. And you can't be like that with every client. And I think, you know, and I, I'm, I, I know a lot of coaches are also like that too, but I think what separates Matt from a lot is he treats everyone different, very in everyone's individual, you know, what I can't handle to go extremely hard on cardio, but guess what? Someone else might be able to. So Yeah. he's Mm doing that with them, you know? -hmm. Yeah. And he also knows that like, I, I pay very close attention to like my, my own body's feedback. And if I feel something's not working, I'm going to test something out. And then I'm like, Hey, look, this is what, this is, this, this is what I did. Yeah. And he'll say, okay, if this is working, let's do it. Okay. And uh, another question, um, competing multiple times in a year, like Samson Dowda, what did like 13 shows last Samson year? needs a break, bro. Okay. You're not, you're not I'm big with online you. doing I'm almost much. full. I think at the level we're at, Yeah. especially if your goals are to win the Olympia, I I don't understand why you would want to do five, six, seven shows in a year. I just really don't. You know, because eventually your your body your body it's not going to fail, but your body is going to start to just it's just it's just going to stop. You know what I mean? Like you need a break. Responding You're going to hit to a sticking point, and you need to pull yeah. back. You need to rest. You need to chill, and that's it. When you're doing that many shows, it, you're not you're not making improvements like you think you you know you could. It, it is what it is. You know, Yeah. and I know Samson has the goal to win the Olympia, like like Mm -hmm. we all do. Yeah. But look at Derek. You know, I'll use Derek as an example. Why? Why wouldn't he do the Arnold? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why? Why? But because he has a goal, and I, and I commend him for it. He has the goal. I'm winning. The Olympia is the only thing I want to win. I'm sticking to it. Yeah. You know, and that's that he wants to make the improvements to come back better and better and better and better. And Yeah. I and I and I, and I commend him for that. But I think if you compete at least twice a year, I think that's fine. I don't see an issue with that. But I think as you get to three, four, it, it just starts to become a lot. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. Your body's gonna stop responding to one the the gear if you have to And it, keep it full like and it's shit. not even physically, bro. It's Yeah. mentally. You, you're Yeah. going through all these preps. Yeah. Mentally, you're just you're gonna lose it eventually, you know? Yeah, you don't get a break. You don't get the fucking eat the food you've been craving for the whole crap. You gotta keep going. Like, yeah. I mean, I agree. You're Samson you're gonna thirteen. you're gonna go stir crazy. Yeah, yeah. That was another question. You know, what's your favorite uh, cheat meal off season? <laughs> Cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake Factory. And then what what dish would you have? Like a pasta. I'm assuming pasta. That's what I get when No, I order cheese. I get I well first off I eat a lot of brown bread. I'm a brown bread Okay. guy. I I like to get their Caesar salad, um, Yeah. the avocado rolls, Okay. and then I get their uh bacon bacon cheeseburger with uh, the French fries. And then for dessert, it, it's it's always between three options now, now that I've tried a lot of them. I'm either going to get a red velvet cheesecake. Yep. I'm going to get Linda's fudge chocolate cake.
Yeah. Or I'm going to get their strawberry shortcake. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. That's good. Good choices there for sure. The red velvet cheesecake is always my go-to cheesecake factory. It's um, it's awesome, dude. Yeah. Uh, hey, question here if you, if you want to take a few more. Uh, whose physique do you like the most in classic physique? Um, I'll probably say Chris. Seabum. Okay. All right. I'll um, say Seabum. If you have some time, Aaron, I got a few more questions. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Um, do you think Samson's package at the Arnold UK was his best package ever? I listen. I like the way he looked in Romania. Okay. Me, me too. I, I don't think the Arnold UK was his best package when he when he walked out on stage. He looked downsized. The legs looked more depleted. Um, he looked flatter, and it wasn't that that normal bursting from the seams, full Samson Dowder that we're used to seeing. Which is the problem is, with that is though is he's, he's going to have issues finding yeah. the balance between bursting full, yes, and then trying to balance that condition look. Yeah, you know, because they also got to remember he's tall as shit. Like, yeah, he's big, mm -hmm. he's big as hell. Yeah, but he's also tall. So if you deplete him a little bit too much, he is going to look. A little on the stringier side, yeah. so I, in my opinion, which I think is best case scenario for almost any competitor, be ready early, man. Be ready early, and that way you can pull back, the body can chill, rest, and you feed back into the show. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can do that, you'll be able to balance that condition and the fullness a lot easier. Yeah, they said that he carb depleted, like he went low carbs. All the way into this UK, and they didn't they didn't carve them up. So, to me, I just think they really don't know. Like that, like you can't. You have to carve up. I mean, should you frame that big, you're gonna lose that fullness. But then he doesn't have the the striated glutes. He can't bring in that conditioning from the back. So it's like, what the what the fuck does he do? Like it's kind of like more cardio, bro. He needs more cardio. He needs more cardio. But he's like you. He was doing like thirty minutes. A day. Yeah, but he, he he, might for him it doesn't work. For you, it works. Right, but for him, no, man, you got to do like Ronnie and the guy. They were doing two hours a day, like it's and, crazy. And, and here's the thing, I, and I and I think why I'm able to get away with slightly less than most is because again, I don't get out of shape during That's my true. off season. Yeah, I, I just don't. Right, I and we and we track up the food very slowly. So by the end of like you know uh, the off season quote. Yeah. I'm eating a good amount of food. Like I'm eating a lot, but because we tapered it up slowly, and like I said, I I don't go out to eat a lot. It's not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I never get like fat. So like once we actually start doing like hard cardio, it just yeah. you know it just starts to go goes off real fast. What was your heaviest weight this off season compared to? I, that I didn't previous... get too heavy, bro. I didn't go over two two eighty five. Honestly, oh, okay. And right now, what are you two? You said yeah, two. we since oh, it's funny, yeah. like when me and Matt decided to start rep, I guess, for the New York, yeah. my weight has been around 280, 284 this whole time. Yeah. Okay. And um your calories too, like off season calories compared to prep calories. Is it we he's made maybe like two diet changes since we started, and they weren't like really big changes with food, to be honest. Okay. It's like okay. very very minuscule. Like he he would lower it maybe by like you know I don't know. We'll, we'll just guesstimate like tw twenty grams of carbs a, a meal per se. Okay. All right. Um. All right, guys. I'm gonna sign off here. If you have any questions, leave them right now because I cannot go back up and look at everything because I <laughs> <laughs> we talked for an hour and there's a ton in there. I just can't see everything so if you have a question for nick walker right now one minute let's let us know we'll get it in if not we're going to sign off um because it's been a, been over an hour which is longer than we usually go would you would you do any of the other arnold's like the uk would you, would you do the arnold ohio and then two weeks later fly over to the uk and do it just to fucking get another paycheck 150 grand um I, honestly bro i would like to do them all and to what this does you get to meet your fans in the UK. Like, right? You didn't you didn't go to the UK. So it's like 
with your sponsor no. and things like that. You just, so yeah, no. you could, I, I would love to go to Brazil and compete yeah. and you know, like stay an extra few days and, you yeah. know, yeah. do, do something over there. I would love, I do want to go to the UK and compete there at some point and do the Arnold. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I mean, like, like I sound like a hypocrite now, but like I just said, I don't think competing more than twice, you know, when you travel to Olympia is a thing, but I like to use the Arnolds as an exception to a degree, yeah. you know, because they're, they're still very prestige shows. They still yeah. offer tons of money and it, it's cool to say like, yeah, I have, you know, hopefully if I, if I accomplish all that, I have four on our classic wins. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Then, yeah, I, that was my goal, right? To win four. Yeah. One, there it is. Four. Done. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be cool. I think it'd be a good strategy next year if you do the Arnold Ohio and then fly over to the UK and, and do that. And see the fans up there. If, yeah. if it's in April. It should be in April next year. We yeah, do Arnold Brazil. In the Brazil as well. So we'll do three Arnolds next year. You should, depending on who's doing it, be able to to win those. So, right? I mean. Only time why, I tell, baby. Why not? Why not? <laughs> they said Nick should do the Dubai Pro. I know that's a hundred grand for his prize, so that's not. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even, and I think that's another thing that's cool is that you're seeing these shows now, like really up, up, up in the, the prize, and I, and I think that's cool. I really do. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's great cool. for the sport. It just shows that the sport now, like it's really going in upward now. You know. Yeah. No, it is definitely. All right, man. Been over an hour. I really, man, again, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I uh, wish you all the luck going into the New York Pro. I don't think you're going to need it for the most part, but I wish you good luck and for the Olympia as well. And um, yeah, appreciate you coming on. Of course, bro. Thank you. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.